Welcome back. This is the third and final part of this special edition, as it happens. I am Natasha Mazzoni. Now is your opportunity to engage directly with me. Our lines are open on 011 759 6340. I am still with my guest, Feral Hafiji, editor at large of the Huffington Post, and you are welcome to pose questions to her as well. Our first caller on the line is Tumishio Maloto from Pretoria. Tumishio. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm very well. How are you? I'm well. I'm, I'm asking this question to you as a young black woman. Do you think the DA is diverse enough from a woman perspective? That's a, that's a very interesting question, and it's a question that's very important for not only women in politics, but women all over our country to answer. I think that we are certainly moving in the right direction. I thank the woman who came before us, who helped break the glass ceiling. And I think that women as a whole are starting to gain ground in what was notoriously a male-dominated field. I think when one looks at Parliament, we could certainly do with more women uh, in, in Parliament, but I think we're making massive strides. In the Democratic Alliance, I look at the leadership of the DA, especially in terms of who our provincial leaders are and our shadow ministers are, and I'm very pleased with the, pro the progress we are making. But of course, this is a progress that could always be made further. Feral, I'm sure that you'll also agree in, in journalism, also it used to be a male-dominated area, and women are certainly coming to the fore in, in the field of journalism. Most decidedly, if you look at who heads ENC it's Papi Mashlangu. If you look over at the SABC, uh, Patiswa and Kobeni, who used to who used to be at ENCA as well. So these two most powerful uh, journalism jobs in the country are, are held by women. You can go across the field and, and look at that. May I ask a follow-up question to what the caller? Or do you want to get more callers? Let, 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 okay. let, let, yeah, you can. I believe we've lost our callers. So please, you, yes. you you're welcome. So oh, wait, I see we we yes. do have our next caller, Tato Magena. She's back from Pretoria. Tato, hello. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. Hello. Uh, my question is, what is your take on women in corporate in SA? Because all I see is men in all these sectors. I mean, they are all over. So I'm sure, Feral, this, this was part of your follow-up question. I think as we look around corporate South Africa, it's important to notice how many women are coming up in very senior positions and taking up very senior roles. I see it uh, certainly in the state-owned entities, how many women are taking senior roles. And I think in business in general, we're seeing more women CEOs coming up and women not afraid to tackle these, these problems. Um, Farrell, I'm sure you'll agree, women have it quite difficult in terms of running a family, having children, and, and balancing a career. And I'm sure in journalism, you've experienced this yourself, just like we do as politicians. The, the, the numbers, um, Natasha, in corporate South Africa, private sector, are pretty dismal. Uh, we know we're near even the bar of 30%. Um, the state-owned enterprise sector has done brilliantly, but what's the impact or the effect of that been? So I think a lot of work still um, necessary in the private sector. Why aren't we seeing this global movement, the same as you would see in, in politics, not reflected in, in the private sector? It's, it's a question that I uh, think about a lot. Uh, what are the ways we can make workplaces easier for, for women, given the multiple roles that they perform? And Feral, I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's up to us as women to also make the platform available for more women to come in, and, and that we lead the way in many ways to, to show women the, the, yes, the way to get and into... Not to be Put, push her not to push anyone to down, quite right. Who lift other people. That's right. It's always about lifting people so, up. So here's my question then. Yes. Um, so um, when the Sunday Times was rude to you, they, they said blonde ambition on the front page. I think you wanted many of us to support you in a form of female or women's solidarity. Great. I think it's important that we do that. I've wondered to myself in the past couple of weeks, though, why haven't women in the DA stepped in to exercise a similar hand of feminist solidarity to Pat DeLille, who the two report shows that she made errors, but they, they don't reveal massive corruption, and Kandla style corruption, as my colleague calls it. Don't you think there was a duty to help her through a difficult time and to keep her within the party. Farid, I'm so glad you asked me that because it's a question I get asked quite often yes. as a woman in politics. And my answer is this, when it comes to accountability and good governance, it has nothing to do with our gender. We are put in positions of authority because we are excellent at our jobs. And if we want men to hold us to, to the same levels of accountability and the same levels of governance, and, and we fight for these roles, then we must expect to be held to the same levels of accountability and governance that anyone else 
else would be. So I hear what you're saying, but I do think that when it comes to issues of accountability and good governance, we must hold ourselves uh, to the same account that we would any man. But, uh, is call, uh, we've, got, we've got a, a caller coming in from, uh, from Johannesburg. Hello, Quinton, you're online. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Quinton. Good. I'm going to cut the chase and get to the point, Natasha. My problem to the DA, once again, you have insulted the colored community. The DA is very quick to take people to court, but not themselves, especially the whites. Ellen Zola has been discriminating against all races. Nothing has been done to Ellen Zola. Ellen Zola had problems with Lindy Ware prior to this. Always there's a problem with white people, but they're not taking the whites up. Here again in Reicher Park, the DA recently has taken and laid charges from the chief work from Eden Park coming into Reicher Park and laid charges against voters of Reicher Park, the community of Reicher Park. Then again, your councillor Charles Crawford has mentioned it that he the only help people who voted for him, and that was only the blacks in the informal settlement. We want you, Patricia Delo, Busi Maimane, that was here. Only now that it's election time, you people are available to come through for the colored vote. It was high time that the colored must make up, have their own political party, and stop having people like yourselves wanting to dictate to colored people. And we must unite as colored people to show you people we are a strong force as much as any other political party or race is. We are sick and tired of you people discriminating and not here for us. Today is voting time. Now you're on the ground. We don't see any DA person, none whatsoever. When we call upon you people, you don't come to Rega Park. When we call into the colored communities, you are never available. Your guys are sitting wherever you're sitting and ignoring the colored people. Now you're discriminating against Patricia Gallo. Quentin, what thank you very much wrong? for your question. Quentin, I'm going to answer you if I may, because we are under time constraints. Quentin, please don't feed into the hate narrative. We are South Africans, and we are here to represent all South Africans. I am a white South African, and I represent you as a colored man just as much as I would anyone from any other race. In the Democratic Alliance, we believe in diversity. We believe in holding everyone to account. It is simply untrue what you say about white members of the DA not being held to account. In actual fact, Patricia DeLille faced a very serious disciplinary hearing from the Democratic Alliance, and as such, lost many leadership roles within the Democratic Alliance. So I don't think that you should be coming on air and trying to to create a racial divide that simply doesn't exist. The DA is on the ground. We are the party for all the people, and we will continue being the party for all the people. Our next caller is David from PE. Evening, David. Hi, Natasha. I'm so glad I'm after the call of it phoned you because I consider you being the pit bull of the industry of your political party. You hold the bone and you will not let it go. My problem, however, in Port Elizabeth is as a disabled person, I feel the DA is very arrogant in Port Elizabeth. I can speak to the one side. Why is that? I think that, firstly, thank you. Um, you call me a pit bull. I was called a bulldog over the weekend. Uh, someone else called me a Rottweiler. Very I'm starting to get a, a little bit of a complex here. <laughs> but I, I thank you very much for your compliment. And you are quite right. Once I grab hold of something, I, I don't let go. My job is to fight for South Africa, and I certainly will fight with all my might uh, for South Africa. I'm terribly sorry to hear that as a disabled person you think that we are not uh, uh, assisting you. I would certainly like to take this up with you further and take it up with the, uh, with the leadership in, the, in PE. I know that uh, a lot of changes are taking place in the PE municipality and we would love to engage with you as someone who is disabled to get uh, your views on how we can make PE a more disabled friendly city so that it is easier for you to, to, to move around. Sadly, Feral, this is all we have time for tonight. I would like to take a special men wait, mention to thank you for coming out tonight. I know how busy you've been. It's been a real pleasure having you on my show tonight. You have you are really been a great guest. To you all watching at home, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for participating. If you have missed any of today's programs, you can watch it again on YouTube. Please do, though, tune in tomorrow at 8, 8 p.m. for another special edition of As It Happens. This time it will be hosted by the UDM's Bantu Holomisa. I'm Natasha Mazzoni. Reminding you, South Africa, we have got this. 
Good night and thank you for watching.